Greetings everyone from sunny Jamaica. My name is Paula Blake Powell. I am a senior parish court judge and I have been in the legal field for nearly 31 years. When I started practicing as an attorney, I specialized in civil litigation and family law. I became a judge in 2004. And since then, I have done mainly children's court and family court work, but I also have experience with traffic court and criminal court. I am also a proud member of the International Association of Women Judges, as well as the Caribbean Association of Women Judges. I am one of the founding members of the Caribbean Association, and I am one of the vice presidents. In regards to the Jamaica Association of Women Judges, I am one of the founding members also, and I was the first president for four years. After that, I remained on the executive as I am now, first as the immediate past president, and now I am a floor member. For the Jamaican and the Caribbean, we have been involved in judicial education. We have hosted conferences on topics like gender-based violence, adjudicating during the pandemic. And that was such an important resource for the, the, the judges who were blindsided by COVID-19. And we needed to share best practices on how to use technology, how to use Zoom to conduct court hearings, etc. So that is one main area, judicial education. And I always stress that because I do not want persons to consider that being a woman judge and having an association is about fluff. It is about real serious legal issues. And the IAWJ, over the, the, the many years of its existence, since 1991, they have always maintained a platform for judicial education. There are so many topics that they have grappled with trafficking in persons, sextortion, gender-based violence, judging in the community, you name it. So judicial education, one. Secondly, as I said, networking, support and encouragement for women judges generally. So we encourage each other. We have functions at which judges attend and those who are more experienced, who are older, will pour into the younger ones and lift them up because these are the shoulders on which we stand. The judges who have gone before, some of them who are now retired, who are now patrons. And there is also this social involvement in Trinidad, for example, right now, the Caribbean Association of Women Judges, they are piloting a program with at-risk children through the United Nations Spotlight Initiative and there is an after-school center. Some will maybe call it a homework center, and it operates even during the holidays where someone who's very experienced, who's very skilled, creates very good programs where the children, they come and they are empowered. They are assisted with their homework. Their self-esteem is, is built up, and they're even looking at the possibility of taking the children overseas. So those are some of the wonderful initiatives which are going on right now. Yes, so I wanted to mention a personal success that when I worked in the family court, in the children's court, I was able to innovate certain programs such as a children's drug treatment program and a parent in school for the parents and the guardians. So I was given that space as a woman judge to ensure that the court met the social needs of the clients. And I am happy to report that I also hosted a study tour of colleagues from Guyana, Guyana judiciary and the legal sector. And in 2019, I was actually invited to go to Guyana to participate in the launch of their drug treatment court. 
So after coming to Jamaica and seeing what we had here, they went back home and they created a drug treatment court and they also created a children's court. And I was honored to be able to go there and share that experience with them. Well, attending the conferences over the years, as I said, I joined in 2016, and that was when I went to a conference in Washington, D.C., USA. And I remember one of the speakers on that day, she challenged us, and she said that as a judge, you have power. So be very intentional and be very careful how you use your judicial power, and you need to try to ensure that you make the experience of the person who appears before you in the courtroom better. You have to use your judicial power to mold and to shape a life for the better. So judicial education, that has been one of the number one benefits to go into the conferences. Secondly, networking. And in fact, at least two speakers, two judges who are speakers at the IAWG conferences have actually come to Jamaica and they have taken part in legal education conferences over the years. And of course, the culture and the social benefits, you can't discount that. We are able to travel to other countries that perhaps some of us would not get an opportunity to go to otherwise. And we get to understand about other people. We get to see the, the, the food and the cultural, the, the dances, the dress, etc. And when we have these conferences, one of the most exciting times for me is when you have the roll call of nations and you know who is there from the Caribbean, who is there from Africa, who is there from Latin America, Europe, all the continents are represented. And just being at an IAWG conference, it's just a mind blowing experience. And of course, at the last conference that we were able to attend in person, the Jamaicans who were there, led by yours truly, we had to show them how to do some Jamaican reggae dancing to the Bob Marley beat. So <laughs> attending the IAWJ conference, it's a no brainer. I encourage everyone who's able to, to go to these conferences. It will be a life changing experience. I just want to raise the issue of the impact of war on women judges. That is a concern to me with what is happening in Russia, Ukraine, Haiti. Haiti is so near to Jamaica and Haiti is dear to the IAWG. The IAWG over the years has gone into Haiti and they have poured a lot into the fight against trafficking in persons. So I don't want to encourage the IAWG to look at this issue more closely going forward. I know that we have been looking at the effect of what has happened in Afghanistan on the women judges, but I would hope that we will expand it to cover the other areas. And another interesting area as well is that of wellness and mental health. Recently, the IAWJ had a, a, a forum in which we spoke about the issue of taking care of yourself. And I think that is another area that we can look at in the future in a deeper way. And, and also the impact of natural disasters. You know, we have heard about Turkey and the, the, the earthquake and that you can only imagine so, so the impact of, of natural disasters here in the Caribbean, we are exposed to hurricanes, et cetera. And sometimes this will affect the, the possibility of, of court being convened. So these are areas, the impact of war, the impact of, of natural disasters on the woman judge 
And of course, the importance to ensure that there is wellness and that there is good mental health. So those were some of the, the other areas that I think are important for the IAWJ to focus on going forward. Certainly, I am very excited and hopeful about the future of women judges associations, both the international and the ones that are nearer to me. We have, as I said, succession planning taking place. So the IAWJ is making sure to lay the groundwork for the younger judges to get on board and to become very effective in their local jurisdictions. In the Caribbean, that will only continue. And in Jamaica, certainly, we are going on a membership drive. What we do, we have one-on-one -on -one engagement where we say, all right, this colleague, that colleague, we're going to go and let the person know the benefits to be obtained from being a member of the Women Judges Association. And on the other hand, we have events that we invite them to. Certainly, if you are a member, there are certain benefits that you will be exposed to that the others who are not yet members will perhaps miss out for now. But the fact is that the events are inclusive. And we even invite the male colleagues they come and they have a good time. So the future is bright because of the strategic, intentional steps which are being taken to recruit new members and to build on the solid foundation. The solid foundation is there for the IAWJ and all of the member organizations, and that will definitely not change. So as I said before, I want to invite all of the women judges who are considering joining their local associations to do that, do that, come on board and let us bond together and change the world for the better. That is what being a woman judge is all about, using your judicial power. And if I you know, could be allowed just to share one of the greatest successes that I have had in my legal career, in my judicial career, is that I have been able to adjudicate with empathy, to balance justice with mercy, not to be a pushover because I'm a woman. And sometimes you have to dispense what is called tough love. However, over the years, I was not even aware of the impact that I was having not only on the staff, the court staff who work with me, but also on the clients who come before me, children and adults, and also on the external stakeholder groups who serve the court system. Interestingly, there's a social worker who is now overseas who sent me a message recently to let me know that he was impacted, impacted in a positive way by the way that I approached my work and by the things that I would say and do. And he now, he's in the United Kingdom and he is implementing some of what he learned from me. So that simply warms my heart because I have been allowed to be a woman judge and as I said, to bring a positive change to the world of all those who work with me and who appear in court before me and all of the others into whom I have been able to pour because of the many projects that are executed, planned and executed by the Jamaica Association of Women Judges, the Caribbean Association of Women Judges, and the IAWG.